Today, I'm gonna show you a couple of my secret techniques in getting the film look in Capture One. Capture One is an amazing editing software and if you are to ask me, it's a better alternative to Lightroom. I just love Capture One and after I tried it a couple of years ago, I left Lightroom completely and I didn't look back for a second. The interface is much easier to understand in my opinion and it offers more complex tools that you would generally find in video editing software. I'll be showcasing some of these tools throughout the video, so watch till the end. And remember, I put chapters in the playback timeline so you can find exactly what you need faster. This will only be a quick introduction to Capture One and a short take on how I edit my shots step by step. So if you find this video helpful, let me know in the comments and I'll make a longer video where I edit more of these shots. These images were taken on my trip to Bucharest where I did a little street photography video presenting the Sony Film Simulation picture profiles which will get you better color straight out of the camera. So if you're interested in Sony Film Simulations, you can find the settings on my website, link in the description down below. So as a basic rule, my main editing steps are contrast, color correction, color grade, and lastly, red halation effects. Let's start from scratch. Select an image and press F7 for a new variant. What I think is most important when starting is bringing the contrast to your design liking. So tone is the first thing that you need to decide on before diving into color. Because you can have great colors, but if your overall tone is off, then it's all junk in my opinion. I like to start by lifting the brightness and bring down the exposure to give myself a flatter image. Doing so will bring up more details in the shadows and reduce the highlights giving the image an overall softer tone. And that is because the brightness will control more of the darker mid-tone areas, while exposure controls more of the higher end of the image, meaning the mid-tones and the highlights. Next, to make this easier and focus only on contrast, let's reduce the saturation of the image completely. When working with contrast, I have a very simple and basic rule, which is what you want to show and what you want to hide. So by using the Curves tool, you run up the parts of the image that you want to show and darken the parts that you want to hide. But how do you know which part of the image corresponds to which part of the curve? By hovering over the image, in the Curves panel you will see an orange line will appear, showing us exactly where that area is falling in the curve. So to start off, let's start two points in areas where we want modifications and make an S-curve. Remember what I said. Hide stuff in the shadows and lift the brightness in areas of interest. You keep on shifting until you're satisfied with the end result. This will take a little bit of experience, so don't worry if you don't get it the first time. I should like to bring up the midtones and the highlights and cross the shadows just a little bit to guide the eyes where they should look at. Eyes in general are most attracted to areas with most brightness, contrast, and saturation. So I'll use that information next time to help the eyes find their way to the subject. There's so many videos out there telling you that for a good image to happen, you need to make an S-curve in every window you can find. And that is so not true. In fact, you can make a single point in the mid-tone area and drag it all the way to the top. That will give you a soft faded look to your images, which is more dreamy. And you can further refine it to your own liking. So I feel like what matters the most in the end is the mood of the image. What do you want to express or how do you want people to feel like when they look at your image? So next question would be RGB or Luma? Because you might have noticed we have so many panels here in Capture One and that's exactly what I'm talking about compared to Lightroom. Capture One offers you greater control so you can finally adjust each part of the image for better results. Lightroom doesn't even have an option to separate RGB from the Luma curves. And that is important because by working only with Luma, you can adjust the overall contrast of the image without affecting the saturation of it. You can work in both RGB or Luma at the same time and it's nothing wrong with that. You just need to know when and how you want to use it. And Capture One will give you more options and control in that matter. So now that we have brought the tonality of the image to a point where the subject is put in focus, let's compress the image just a bit. I just like to work with levels very much because it helps me compress image or manipulate image data in different points. More easily explained lets you play around with brightness and contrast by moving different image data like black and white point and also mid-tones. For film shots, I like to compress the highlights by quite a bit and maybe bring up the black point by about, let's say, 7. And you can also adjust the mid-tones if needed. 
Usually after all this, I go back into the curves tab to adjust the contrast if I feel it's too flat. As you can see, it's a back and forth kind of a job when it comes to contrast, where you need to go back and further refine until you're satisfied with the look of the image. So for me personally, this was it for the contrast part. Maybe we'll come back later after the color grading to adjust it even more. Now for the color part, let's go into the color menu found in above tabs. Basically, it's pretty simple and I have a rule which is very helpful. What color do I like and which one I want shifted? Analyze the whole image, look what colors are present in the image and then ask yourself, which ones I like and which ones I want shifted? Remember what I said when talking about contrast. It all depends on the mood of the photo and how you want the people to feel like when they look at your image. Keep that in mind because we'll use it throughout color as well. So for me this image is very magenta and the colors are pretty boring. I like my image is a bit cyan so I'll just bring down the temperature and the tint more towards green. It's already looking better. You can see how just by shifting the temperature and the tint we can make huge improvements in color. And this might seem very simple and basic, but I cannot stress enough about it in my course. Over the internet, I keep seeing so many tutorials doing so much intense image processing, using the qualifier, brushes, and all kind of stuff. But if we understand the basics, we don't need to complicate ourselves with impractical techniques. That's why I think the simpler the grade, the better. And by easing our workflow, the more enjoyable it gets. And this type of workflow will offer you fluidity and will ease your editing process. Next, let's reanalyze the colors for a second. Here is another really cool Capture One tool called the Color Ranges, which you can access by pressing on these three dots. Here you can adjust the areas of influence for each color range, but you can also see exactly what colors are present in the scene and how much each channel is affecting on their own. Okay, I get that, but why is this important for us? It's important because we know exactly which colors are problematic and which part of the image should be further adjusted. As you can see, there are some reds, but not much. There is more color in the orange and yellow ranges, also in the green and blue tonalities. Also, there are no pinks or magentas and there are very little reds. So mostly we'll be working with green, blue and oranges. Okay, good. So what I'll do is even the color channels trying to balance out the colors and focus them on only two complementary ones, which will be blue and orange. Maybe sounds complicated, so I'll just go ahead and show you exactly what I'm talking about. We can also bring up the saturation to see if there are any mistakes or any color separation happening over the image. Bringing up the saturation also helps me decide which colors I want desaturated to make them less dominant and help balance out colors. I'll desaturate the greens pretty heavily, desaturate just a bit the yellows, and saturate blues, oranges, and reds. Just by balancing out colors in this way, we can achieve a natural complementary color palette and organic color transition, making it look more like film. This was the color correction and color grading step, which are the more complicated steps, so stay with me because we're almost done. Finally, we have artistic color grade and red halation effects. I like a little bit of green in my shots, so in the color balance wheels, I'll add some green yellow in the highlights and some blue in the shadows, just like so. It's looking great as it is, so no further complications for this one. But there's one thing I want to show you, is how you can create this effect differently if you want more control over how much the image is being affected, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. In the Layers channel, right click on the plus icon and select the new filled adjustment layer. Now adjust the luma range for the desired area. I'll go for the highlights. You want something soft and subtle to prevent color separation which can happen even on 14-bit raw files if you're not paying attention. Hit OK and then in the color balance wheels, add your desired color. This way you can define exactly the area which should be affected by the color wheels and how much. And that's pretty cool, right? Last step is halation. I made a couple halation brushes which you can find on my website 
together with other film products. So basically, after you install the brushes in Capture One's source file, which I can show you exactly in the next tutorial, go to Exposure tab, open the style brushes, and you will see multiple options including light leaks effects. Start testing each until you decide which one best fits your image. Now delete all the layers, and I personally will use the Red Relation 2 and 3 together with the Red Relation Light Leak. Some of them will be strong by default, so bring down the opacity for more subtle effects. Right click for the brush menu where you can adjust size flow and opacity. I usually go for something soft. And just start painting over areas of high contrast for the relation to show up. Let's put some light leaks in the corner for more interesting, natural analog effect. If you press Y, you can check and compare the before and after. And this is looking great. Huge differences from start to finish just by doing some simple adjustments. If you like these brushes, you can find them on my website, link in the description down below. And if you want a more in-depth tutorial, let me know in the comment section and I'll create a longer video showing exactly how I edit multiple shots from my trip to Bucharest. Also, subscribe and ring the notification bell to be notified of that video coming out. Till next time, take care and remember, have fun.